Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're gonna give you guys a complete beginner's tutorial to DaVinci Resolve. This tutorial will be very beginner friendly and we will just cover the basics of the application. Before we get started with this video, we wanted to let you guys know that we're actually running a giveaway for Microsoft software through the end of the month. At the end of the giveaway, one lucky subscriber will receive any Microsoft software of their choice from Indigo Software completely free. Indigo Software is an authorized reseller of Microsoft software, which means this will be a 100% authentic copy of whichever software you choose. To enter the giveaway, just follow the steps in this video. If you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, so I have DaVinci Resolve Studio 19 downloaded and installed on my Windows desktop. If you're on Mac or Windows, the software looks mostly the same and you'll be able to follow along with this tutorial regardless of your operating system. When we first open Resolve, we're met with something called the Project Manager. This is where we can access our projects. We have a list of project libraries and this would be a folder containing a set amount of projects. I could create a new project library or I can use the default local database. The first step when starting a new editing project inside of DaVinci Resolve is going to be to select a new project. So let's go ahead and do that. We're prompted to title our project. So let's title this Indigo Software. Once you do that, you're going to be met with something that looks like this. Let's start with a quick layout of DaVinci Resolve. At the very bottom, we have tabs, and these tabs are going to contain a set of tools specific to their category. The first tab is called Media. This is gonna be where our media storage shows up for one thing, but also where we can import media to use. The next page is the cut page. I actually don't personally use this, but if you become familiar, you can get very efficient inside of the cut page. And this is again, just used for a cutting workflow mainly. The next page is where most of the work happens. This is called the edit page. On the edit page, we have a timeline divided into video and audio. On the left-hand side, we have a miniature view of our media pool. And below that, we have our effects. Effects would also include transitions and titles. On the right-hand side, we have settings like the mixer, and this is an audio mixer, and we also have the inspector. So when we have a clip selected, the inspector will give us metadata and other settings that we can actually use to control the clip. And we'll get more into that later. The next page is called Fusion. Fusion gives us an abundance of tools for animation and motion graphics. This is a bit more on the complicated side of the program, so we won't be using Fusion in this tutorial. The next page is color. Color is going to allow us to do all of our color grading or exposure adjustments. There are a lot of tools on this page as DaVinci Resolve is kind of known for color grading. We're gonna to touch on some of the basics a little bit later. Next up, we have Fairlight. Fairlight is basically an in-depth dive into audio settings and audio effects. And then lastly, we have the Deliver tab. This is gonna be where we can run our exports and change our various export settings. Now, I basically don't use the media tab because I feel perfectly fine using this in the editing tab. So let's start here. Now, before I start editing footage, I'm actually gonna change my project settings. In the bottom right here, we have a little gear and we can use that to change our settings. We have various categories as well here for the different settings and there are a lot of settings to choose from. But luckily, most of them can remain as default. I like to keep my timeline frame rate at 23,976, which is what my camera records in and the timeline resolution at 3840. And sometimes I will export in 1080p, but I like to keep my timeline at 4K. I don't change anything in the image scaling, and I do have specific settings for color management, but as a beginner, or if you're not working with log footage, you may not have to pay attention to this page just yet. If you are working with, say, S-Log3, I like to work in the DaVinci Wide Gamut slash Intermediate Color Space. This is gonna give us the most amount of flexibility with our footage. And on Windows, the recommended output color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2. General options, I'm not usually messing with general options. Here are your camera raw settings. So if you're working with a raw codec from, for example, a RED camera, we can access all of those settings here. Here we have capture and playback settings, subtitles and transcripts, fairlight and path mapping. Now, the one thing you may wanna change right off the bat here is your working folders. So in the master settings, we have three working folders. And if we click browse, we can actually choose where we want these working folders to be. And in my case, I manually created this on one of my hard drives, which I use for editing. So we can see video projects. I have them all mapped to this. 
And there's also another working folder inside of Capture and Playback. We have Save Clips 2. And again, I have the same folder selected, D Video Projects. Okay, with those settings out of the way, let's continue with our project. Inside of here, I have the master folder, and I can actually right click on this, and I might want to create a new bin. The way I usually do this is I separate this into footage, and then I might have a bin for, let's say, music, and I might have various other bins such as logos. Inside of the footage, I'm going to right click on this one, and now I'm going to create another new bin, and this is going to be the name of my camera. How you do your workflow is entirely up to you. This is just how I do mine. Inside of the FX3 folder, I'll double click into there and I'm gonna hit Control and I to import some footage. Now I'm gonna go to where I have some footage saved on my hard drive. All right, I've selected a clip from my hard drive and now I can just click and drag to actually bring this out to my timeline. This is gonna automatically link this into a video and an audio track, again, separated by this line here. Now that it's on the timeline, I can click to drag it around. At any point, I can uncheck this which is the link clips, and then I can move this one independently. And we're gonna see that we're now off sync there. Control Z will undo at any time. And I could click this to go back to the link mode. I can also turn off the magnet so that it won't snap around, or if I want it to snap, I can enable the magnet. Right clicking on the clip will allow me to unlink them. For example, if I wanted to link the correct audio that wasn't the in-camera audio, you might use that. Right click again to link them back together. Now let's go ahead and find the part of the clip where I start talking. We can also tell that by the audio waveform. I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard or come up here to press the blade tool and I'm gonna click on the clip which will automatically cut both the audio and the video and then I'm gonna click on this left side here and I'm gonna press the delete key which is gonna remove it and delete the dead space. I could also hit the backspace key if I don't want to remove the dead space. I could continue this and again I can just go ahead and make cuts wherever I want to Let's say I cut off this dead space here and I'm gonna select this and hit delete and select this and hit delete. Now, if you're working with log footage like me, you may want to apply a LUT or various other color grading effects. This is not at all going to be a color grading tutorial here. So I'm just gonna demonstrate the very basics of the color tab. Inside of here, we have something called nodes and these are basically like layers of color adjustments. If I hit Alt and S, I can add a serial node, which is the most common type of node that you'll probably use. You can label these nodes by right clicking and hitting node label. Let's call this one LUT. And I'm gonna call my first node exposure. So with my LUT node selected, I'm going to right click on it and hover over LUT. As we can see, we're already gonna have a lot of LUTs that are built in within Resolve. I'm gonna select one that I have downloaded externally. Now that I've selected my LUT, we can see that my footage looks a bit closer to how I actually want it to, although it is a little dark. To brighten up your image, we can use the color wheels, which will be automatically selected in the color tab. With my exposure node selected, I'm gonna come over here to the offset and on this little gray slider, I'm just gonna bring this to the right. Okay, and now our exposure is a little bit increased and I could also just as easily add some contrast here. Going back into the edit tab, let's go ahead and click on the clip and see what we can access in the inspector. So in the inspector, we have volume settings, we have pan settings, we have effects such as voice isolation, and this is on the audio tab. We're also gonna have the file tab. This is where we can review the metadata and the video codec. We also have the audio sample right here and the resolution. If we go back to video, this is where most of our video controls are gonna be, so we can easily zoom in or out. We can do cropping, we can do dynamic zoom, and we also have stabilization and other features from this menu. When listening to this audio, I noticed that the sound was only coming out of the left side. We can fix that by adjusting the pan, and this is in the Fairlight tab, so we'll cover a few settings here. Where it says spread, I can click and drag this wheel all the way back until there is no spread, so basically it'll split the audio evenly between the left and right channels, effectively making it a stereo channel. So with that, the audio is combined. We also have things like dynamics and the equalizer, which are a bit more complicated, but overall very easy tools to use. For example, I could add some frequencies to the highs, or I could take away some of the low frequencies if I'm dealing with something like an air conditioner. Let's say I'm pretty happy with this clip. I could also add pictures or more videos on top of this, and it's always gonna show the video that's on top first. Once you're happy with your video, exporting is super easy. We're gonna head over to the Deliver tab. Here we can use controls I and O to set in or out points. So if I press I, that's my in point. I could also click and drag this. And if I set O, that's my out point. And again, I can click and drag on that little point there. 
So I'm just going to have it select the whole clip, which is the whole project in this case. And DaVinci Resolve makes it really easy with the export templates. In a lot of cases, especially if you're exporting for social, you may just do the H.264 master. So this is an H.264 compression codec, and this is going to basically give you some reasonable settings that you can probably just leave on. Maybe I'll change the resolution down to 1080p. And let's go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to click Browse Next to Location, and let's send it to the desktop for now. I'm going to verify my frame rate and that the quality is set to best, and I'll hit Add to Render Queue. And then the last step is just going to be to hit Render All. All right, and it says the render is completed, so I'll right-click and open file location. And if I double-click to open this video, we can see that the video has successfully rendered. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything that we've covered, drop those in the comments below, and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, for a chance to win any Microsoft software of your choice with an official Microsoft license, click this video and follow the steps for a chance to win. As always, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. As our channel grows, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas to make. If you have any videos of your own that you'd like to see us cover, we encourage you to drop those in the comments below. Most of these requests get made into actual videos videos. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.